Hey friends, and welcome to the Do Business Better podcast. It's me, Damian Mason, with another great show for you today because this program has insights and information about the creation of a business, the stages and phases you go through in creating and starting a business, and then whether or not you make it and why, because it comes down to two very critical things. I'm going to share those with you as we move on. So that's what we're talking about. The creation and starting of a business, the stages and phases you go through in that mentally and physically with all of the other people you surround yourself with, and then whether or not you make it and why you will make it or not make it. And there were two reasons that really that comes down to. So this was all ferreted out last week. I had a uh, a very nice afternoon with an aspiring entrepreneur I spent some time with uh, delivering some consultation. And I ferreted this stuff out, and it dawned on me that I'd never done an episode about this. And I thought, man, that's good stuff. I'm going to share it with you. So you're getting some good um, practical business advice that actually came about through working with an aspiring entrepreneur. And um, I know that you're going to be able to apply it to your own life and business. Before we go any further, I want to remind you that the Do Business Better podcast is not just an audio where you get all your audio podcasts, you know, SoundCloud, Stitcher, iTunes, those places, but you can also at any time go to DamianMason.com. DamianMason.com and just click on the podcast uh, tab. There's the Business of Agriculture podcast and there's the Do Business Better podcast. I'd like you then to also consider going to YouTube because they're not just audio, they're video. You can go to the Damian Mason channel. It's as simple as that, Damian Mason channel. Go to YouTube, type that in, and please hit subscribe. The more subscribers I have like you, the better the visibility is, and the more people can see this great content, and I appreciate you doing that. Okay, so then, you're at this point in your life. You're either starting your business, you've started the business, you're starting a new business, you've got this idea, you still have a normal job. Maybe you got laid off. Maybe this whole COVID thing has it so you were staying at home and the the company you worked for said, you know what, Um, we're, we're moving on. Whatever the reason, whatever the reason, you've got this idea. You've had it for a while. Like I said, even people like me that have been out here self-employed for 27 years, 27 years. Can you imagine been pounding the coconuts together and trying to get a dollar to fall out for 27 years now? Even folks like me come up with different concepts, have a call with somebody and look at new things you might put some money into, whatever it is. You're there. Maybe you're not. But I'm going to tell you how it goes from that initial idea until making it or not making it. And as I said up front, I'm going to share with you the two reasons I believe you either make it or you don't. Okay. Idea. They're great. You know, I talk about them in my book, in my Do Business Better book. It's my desk copy. That's why it's got posty notes and my name uh, written on it. Uh, It says desk copy. Um, I talk about ideas, and they're fantastic. you got to have them. as a former comedian, I used to write material all the time. I'd be on an airplane reading the USA Today because it was good, just dumbed down, basic sort of information that the masses knew, and I could take it, turn it into three jokes that night, try it out on stage. One of them would hit, two of them wouldn't. Two of them would hit, one of them wouldn't. Whatever. You get in the habit of always creating new stuff. And the good thing about a comedy background, it taught me not to fall in love with your creative creation and try it. And then if it don't work, toss it. Try it again tomorrow night. If it don't work after three times, it isn't the audience. It's you. It's your product, okay? So the good news is about a comedy background, anybody that's done professional comedy is very used to, first off, being shit on. (laughs) It's very used to having their idea shit on. And it's also very used to finding out that even though I loved the joke, even though I loved the creation, even though I loved the idea, it didn't work. Too many folks driving down the road, there they are, not really enjoying their job, wanting to start something new, and they get this idea. And something comes across the radio, and then they bounce it off of their friend over beers, and their friend says, damn, that's brilliant. Or worse yet, their friend says, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. You know what? You'll just stick with your job and go into the cubicle. Whatever. But the heck of it is. Ideas are great. But they don't make you a nickel until the idea hits the rubber, you know, the rubber hits the road and you become something that's actually of value to a paying customer. 
So what are the phases that go through that? Well, here's how I think the schedule goes. And there's no real schedule. Most people never get past the idea. They have the idea. They get together with their buddies. They have a cup of coffee. You know, the woman says, I was thinking about all the women just like us that have their kids in daycare. And then she comes up with this idea. And then her friend says, yeah, that might work. Or that might be brilliant. Or says, oh, that's stupid. It'll never work. Whatever happens. Lots and lots of ideas. And that's a good thing, especially for us that are out here, you know, trying to pilot our own ship. What happens for those ideas that do make it to the next level? In your head, at least, right? Maybe you jot them down. Most people don't. I recommend you do. You jot them down, kick them around, keep a ledger, keep a notebook, keep a whiteboard. As you know, I like whiteboards. And then let's say it goes from idea to the next thing. And I'm going to call that the brainstorm phase. That's where now it's in your head and you're like, okay, How might this work? And this is where I would encourage you, some of the more detail-oriented types, all they start running with is, uh, you know, what the phone number is going to be or what the job assignment of the 14th employee they hire that sits in the cubicle number C is going to do. That's a bunch of nonsense. That's, 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 you're, you're ruining the entire concept right now. Don't get so detoured about that stuff. Those things can all be worked out. But the brainstorming part that I think matters is, and this is where a lot of folks, they get so caught up in the details, the structure, the process. Oh, well, let's see. Now, where would I rent the office space? Well, you know, I like that street. Well, down there on Berry Street, there's a nice little office. Okay, fine, fine, fine. You're not there yet. Get that shit out of your head. Brainstorming right now should consist of, can you create a saleable product? Who is going to be your customer? How will you reach that customer? Who will be the buyer and how will you reach that buyer? How will you get the money? Because remember, The brainstorming after the idea is out there is now about how to take it from just a concept and make it into something that is of appeal, something that is of a value that a person will give you their money for. Again, most people in brainstorm phase get all whacked out and caught up in all these peripheral details about what the, you know, it's like these people that they've got their middle, the middle name of their fourth child named and what color the bedroom's going to be. And then they find out that, uh, you know, the man is sterile. Uh, don't get caught up in all that crap. Big picture. What's the business look like? Who are the customers? Who, how do you get money from people for your concept? That's it right now. And then who might be the customer? Who might more expand customers? And then you get into, by the way, the third aspect of this. Third aspect of this, I'm going to call the clarification. That's where, man, like you've actually got some paper. You got some pen on paper, right? You, you've actually sat down and you've actually started typing things up. You've even maybe looked to your your uh, peer group, who would be an investor, uh, how you would go to the bank and get some funding for this, or which investment you would crash out of, which 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 thing you would go ahead and sell to begin this, where you would start. As you clarify the business concept, that's a good thing, but again... Right now, yes, if you need space, if you need storage, if you need transportation, those are all fine things to do your diligence on. Get your numbers. Okay, what's the cost going to be? And you start putting together some budget. This is a clarification of the concept. This is phase number three, I'm going to say. Okay, and this is where we were with this entrepreneur, aspiring entrepreneur I met with last week. Needs to really clarify the concept. And um, again, you're looking into now, all right, here's the product because you need to start with this now what the hell is the product what's it look like what's it feel like who's the customer why did they buy it they buy it because you're the cheapest that's usually a bad way to go do they buy it because it says something about them that's usually a very good way to go you have your product that says something about the people who buy it and that makes them feel whole or makes them feel righteous or it makes them feel altruistic or make whatever the reason is makes them feel like they care more about the earth or that they love their children more than the neighbors because they spent more on it. Whatever that thing is, this is where you're clarifying the concept. What's the product look like, feel like? What's it smell like? What's it touch? When you when a customer buys it, whatever it is, janitorial services, what's it look like? That's clarification of the con- clarification of the business concept. Further verifying out who's going to be the customer and how why they're going to give you money. 
Then you usually go through this other phase where you start expanding. You start getting these other sort of notions like, well, you know what? I was talking to my friend Jerry, and he said, he said that at his company, they spend a bunch of money on X, Y, Z. I think that in addition to what I'm doing, this new concept, I could also do this, this, and this. And that's all fine because now you're giving yourselves a lot more, um, shall we say, uh, landing room. You're giving yourself a lot more uh, a safe place to go out there and make this whole thing work, right? You're giving yourself a shout off the tee. Since I'm a golfer now, you're giving yourself a bigger fairway of maybe I could still be successful if the business went over this direction or went over this direction. That's okay. Expansion of what it might look like, what the product mix might be. But be careful here. Because while you're expanding, coming up with all your reasons that you can't fail now because you've got backup plan A, B, C, and D, and E, and F, and you, the more backup plans you have, the less committed you are to the initial plan. Well, yes, we are going to be, as I always talk about my friend Chris, he's got the property maintenance and service and landscaping business. Now, what if then it's like, oh, well, can you also do this? Can you also do that? Can you do appliance repair? Now, what are you? Jack of all trades, master of none? Have you gotten too diluted? Remember, when the customer doesn't know for sure what you do, you lose. The confused mind does not buy. So be careful when you're going through your business sort of uh, still in this, this uh, shall we say, it's not really to fruition yet phase. Be careful during expansion that you don't become a little bit of everything to everybody because then you're a lot of nothing to anybody. Phase number five, questioning and doubt. Now, this is where the excitement's starting to wear off, unfortunately, and I see this a lot. You've seen it too. This is where the aspiring entrepreneur is starting to say, you know, I, I, I tell you what, the, the more I've thought about this, I, I just, well, I, I, Jerry told me he knew a guy down in, uh, in Memphis, had a business just like this, and uh, put a bunch of his money into it, and now he's, he's bankrupt. This is where you start getting the old butterflies. You start questioning whether this can work. And it's normal. Remember the old statement? I think my mother said it. Fools will tread where angels dare to. But sometimes, sometimes we tell ourselves we're being cautious when we're actually just being scared. But it's normal to have questions. It's normal to have doubt. For God's sakes, you know, fear Talk about my book. Kept us alive. Kept us from being eaten by saber-toothed tigers. Fear is a normal, it's the base level human instinct and emotion. That's why uh, the media uses it so effectively, and the politicians do too, to control you. So it's normal to have some sort of apprehension. Don't let it consume you. It's natural to have questions and doubts. But these can usually be pretty reasonably and rationally looked at. A lot of times you're getting questioning and doubt going in your head because you just decide you really are looking for reasons not to move forward. So be very cautious when you're in this phase. Then there's the do or don't do. This is the biggie. This is the do or don't do. So you know we did idea, then brainstorming, then clarification of the business concept, then expansion and add-on. All these different things that maybe you could also do. And maybe that, and they start diversifying the product mix, thinking more about whether that's all good. And then it becomes... Oh, crap. I don't know. I've heard, a I've heard a bunch of bad stories. You convince yourself that your research now has really been thorough, whether it has or not, and you come up with a bunch of questions and doubt. And by the way, I'm not saying that you have no spine. Sometimes the best business decision you make is to not move forward on something. That's fine. Doesn't mean you're weak. Doesn't mean you're bad. Just means that sometimes I've been there too. Talk to a guy on my ag podcast. He says 90 plus percent of the if, uh, deals we look at, we walk from. Doesn't mean, it, doesn't mean it wouldn't work for somebody. It's okay to question. It's okay to have some doubt. Just remember, once you get going, that doubt needs to go away. And you've got to have the confidence. You have the confidence that you did the research and you do have the work ethic and you do know what the hell you're doing. It's okay to still have a couple of questions, but let the doubt stay behind. And now we're at don't or do. Don't or do. Do we move forward or do we not? Do we do this or do we not? And this is where most folks don't. You knew that. Most folks say, ah, you know, I just I just really don't know. I, I mean, I've, I've really, there's a lot of competition. Uh, the economy's really bad. A lot of uncertainty about COVID. Um, you know, I, I, my kid's going to college. Uh, 
it's fine. But most folks, let's face it, don't when it comes down to do or don't. That's why we're not all out here running our own business. That's why we're not all out here creating our own uh, small empires. It's okay. <clears throat> Just remember this. When you're in the do or do not do, a couple of things. Give yourself a timeline because... We've all talked to that person who's going to do something someday. They just don't quite have enough research. They just need that one more thing. They just need one more month of steady pay, and then they'll be set up. They'll just need, well, in three more months, man, my wife's going to be on Social Security, and I can, whatever that reason is, usually... The timeline is never set, and then once it is, they exceed it, and then they say to themselves, well, whatever the reason. Give yourself a timeline and stick with it. You say, I'm going to do this or I'm not going to do it by, name the date, June 15th. And if you've not made your decision and you're not moving forward, all all hands on deck, all energy pointing in the right direction, if you're not there, then you just walk from it and say, I'm not doing it. Admit to yourself that you're not doing it. Give yourself a timeline, do or don't do. And more importantly, remember, as I say in my book, Do Business Better, there is no try. There is no try. There is do and there is not do. Just like Yoda says, there is no try. Do or don't do. And then let's talk about whether you make it or whether you don't. And this is the biggie, and that's why I want to share this entire thing with you. In the, I'm going to move forward, expand, start a new business, uh, take a diversion from the business I have, quit my job, whatever that thing is, what you ultimately want is to make it. Who the hell wants to go through all this agony and all this work then to fall flat? 50% of all businesses fail within five years or so. We've been told, do they really fail or do a bunch of them, they just give up because they say, son of a bitch, this is hard. (laughs) I've got to wake up every day and sell. I've got to wake up every day and go and satisfy a customer. I kind of like my old job back. Whether you make it or whether you don't, don't worry about the five years. Of course, once you're past five years, you're probably doing okay. You've probably figured it out. You've probably adjusted to the work, gotten the right employees, found a nice customer base, found a niche that works for you, figured out how to handle the money, gotten through the slow spots by cash management, all those things. So making it or don't, making it or don't, making it or failing. Then there's longevity or short term. You know, make it for a couple of years. That's pretty good. Make it for five years. That's even better. Make it to where you're in your 10th year, 20th year. You feel really good then. I've been out here piloting my own ship for how long? Holy bananas. Look at me. Of course, you never get cocky to where you say, oh, well, I'm invincible because... The marketplace has a really, really, really uh, bad way of teaching us that none of us are invincible. Remember, Sears was once invincible. Uh, (laughs) You can go on and on and on. Right now, Amazon looks invincible. They're not. But why do you make it or why do you not make it? Why do you have longevity or don't have longevity? I'm going to say there's two things. There's saleable product. Because sometimes your product goes away. Remember, there was a bunch of companies that made a nice profit doing making making payphone booths. They've got to find another saleable product to stay in business, right? We all know that. So, number one, is your product saleable? Are you going to evolve to make sure you retain and remain as a saleable product that the marketplace wants and will give you their money for? And then you. You. Why do you think there are businesses and small self-employed people that always, they land on their feet? You know what? Sometimes they don't land on their feet. Sometimes they land on their head, but they figure it out by God. I got to get back up, scrape myself up off the floor, brush myself off and make it happen. So that comes down to you. Saleable product, of course, and always being relevant, meaning that you adjust to the marketplace is number one for make it and to have longevity. But the other thing, The other thing is you. So in my meeting with this aspiring entrepreneur last week, I said, why do you want to do this? I said, we've talked about the product. We've gone through all this other stuff. We did my whole list. Idea, brainstorm, clarification, expansion, da-da-da-da-da-da. Who's going to be the customer? Why do they buy it? What's this product look like? What's it feel like? What's it taste like? Touch like? All that stuff. And I said, why are you doing this? Which I probably should have started with that. That's okay. She said, well, 
she's concerned about this uncertain product, a product that she's going to use in her own product that um, was previously being a waste product. So she wants to capture a waste product. I'm like, that's cool. That's nice. And that's your number one reason for this business. She says, well, yeah, I think so. I said, all right, I'm going to go to the restroom because I've had two Cokes. And while I'm in the restroom, I want you to come up with a different set of reasons. And I want these to be reasons that are about you. Because right now, I hear you saying that you want to prevent a waste product from going to a landfill. And that's noble. Great. Landfills are ugly, right? But that is not a reason that's going to keep you in the office working until 9 o'clock at night. That's reason is not going to make you wake up excited at 6 in the morning on a Saturday and say, hey, before the kids get up and start playing, I need to crank out a couple of hours and, and work on my business. Not being mean, I'm being honest. You know that too. You really care if some product goes to the landfill? Yeah, you might. Is it going to drive you to the success of your business? I doubt it because it comes down to you and it has to be personal. So when I talked about making it or not making it, we've gone through all the other steps. Now we want you to make it. We've already gone through and explained all the steps of do I do it or do I don't, starting from an idea. But why it's going to make it and why it's not going to make it. Why you're going to succeed or fail. Beyond saleable product and staying relevant. We know that's important. It comes down to you. What is in you that you care enough about that you will put in the hours, you will take the risk, you will go to the bank and sign on the dotted line and grab a little bit of a, a you know, a, a credit line, if you will, short-term financing. You'll, you'll leverage your truck. You'll do whatever it takes. What's the reason? It's got to be personal. Because guess what? All these other things... Yeah, you care about them. You care about environmental stuff. You care about, uh, you know, being a good steward. You care about being a good neighbor. You want to be good to the community. But is that going to be enough to keep you going? I doubt it. It has to be personal. It has to be about you. What is the drive? What is the thing within you that's going to make you put in the hours and do the work and make the sacrifice? Physical, emotional, mental, and financial sacrifice. It needs to be personal. I talk about in my book... At great length, goal setting. But this is beyond goal setting. Let's talk about when you're now planning out your business. What are the three things that you really want? The four things that you really want? Because that's what's going to be the factors that will keep you on the path of success. For me, it was creativity and compensation. I wanted to be more creative than a corporate lighting fixture salesperson, which was what my job was. And I wanted to be in charge of my compensation versus somebody in HR or the assistant to the sales uh, VP deciding whether or not I was worthy of a raise. I wanted to be in charge of how much money I made, or at least more so in charge of the money I made. And I wanted to have more creativity in my life than a corporate commodity light fixture salesperson would have. Those are the two driving forces. Then, after we attained that, I said to myself, now what do I really want? What do I really want? That was the initial reason that caused me to quit my job, and I still have it now. I've got compensation, and I've got creativity, but what next? I want wealth for independence sake. I want fulfillment so that I go to bed tired knowing I actually put in a good day. I go to bed good tired, as my friend Harry Chapin said. Yes, look it up, Harry Chapin, grandfather. It's a recording. I want to go to bed good tired, which is about fulfillment. I want money so that I have independence. And I want location because while some people might want to live in Barrow, Alaska their whole life, I ain't one of them. I don't want to be where it's dark, gloomy, gray, cloudy, crappy. I want to live somewhere that's nice. So those are my reasons. You see, I gave you the initial reasons, the ones that you need to put in your life. What is the one thing, the two things, what two things, three things are you doing this for? Why will you be successful? What two things are driving you? Make it personal. It has to be about you. And then once it gets going, what's the big picture look like? And again, that's still personal. Wealth fulfillment location, health, time with your kids, in charge of your own paycheck. Those are all personal things. What's going to drive you? Tie into that and you will make it and you will achieve longevity as long as your product is saleable and you continue to reinvent. I'm Damian Mason. I appreciate you joining me here for this episode of the Do Business Better podcast. 
I'm going to write an article about this that you can also share around. And now you know the whole entire process, as I see it, going from idea to successful longevity-oriented business for you. And I told you the steps along the way, and I told you what it depends on at the end. Thank you so much. Till next time, again, please subscribe to my playlist or to my YouTube channel. It'll help me a lot. And if I can ever be of service to you in your entrepreneurial ventures or to your organization by delivering a presentation, you know where to find me at DamianMason.com. Till next time, it's the Do Business Better podcast. 